All right. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Silly Games Done Quick, that most treasured of blocks. I'm Punchy. Uh, this is Plywood, man of many Konami speedruns. A speedrunning renaissance man, Maxi Loves. You know him well, because he was literally on the couch for the last run. Uh, and two cards short of a full deck of Dices who lost the yeah. fight with a lead pipe. I'm not doing the hot right recently. Now. <laughs> I, it's reminiscent of Silent Hill, it worked. <laughs> if it's any consolation, right? I injured myself playing the rhythm games in the arcade, so I had to get a Hello Kitty band aid from the, the makeup station back there. So everyone in the. We're all beating ourselves up over here. Speedrunning's dangerous well. work. It's clearly a dangerous hobby. All right, so this is a horror game, but this, this horror run will have anime spirit. That's why we have Miku on the couch back there. So this will be UFO ending. Three, two, one, video games. Woo! Let's get started, everyone. By skipping the RNG section that you would have to deal with on New Game. Yeah, this is a New Game Plus category technically, which doesn't really matter because it just skips like one section. But, but it gives us options. Uh, it gives us access to a whole lot of fun other options that we'll use to make the game do a bunch of dumb things. It'll be very entertaining. It takes a bit to get there though. For the time being, this is just like how this plays out in standard. But the the criteria for UFO ending right is that you have to kill 31 enemies with a particular weapon that you will see shortly. And I, I emphasize 31 because uh, per my usual gimmick, the wiki is totally wrong. It says 30. <laughs> I have to explain this to new runners all the time. So I'm making it a point to like make this very clear now. 31. They keep reversing my edits on this. It makes me very angry. You think they would have learned. They don't get it. They never learn. They never learn. <laughs> it's not going well. It just doesn't, it just doesn't work. Okay, so we need these tongs. Beautiful. Blended. Yeah. It's not like doing a whole bunch of like quick turn and like strafe turn movement. If you bash strafe and a movement key simultaneously, it makes you like immediately snap 90 degrees in a direction. So like, hey, we got good movement going on. Woohoo. But the, the weapon in question is actually unlocked right now, but we need to not be having a weapon equipped in order to access it. So I'm gonna get that off right now. Use the tongs here. Get the key taken with the tongs, do a quick turn cancel there. Wander out here, and behold, the Heather Beam! <laughs> Has a beam! Has a beam! Yeah! This guy didn't die properly. This is a thing that enemies sometimes do in this category. They can just choose to randomly not die, which is good. Hey, the. Okay, so that's got the, the third one. The, nice. the common wisdom for this category has been to use the, the sexy beam, which we'll see in a bit. Like, it's subtly different because it's, quote, stronger, which is technically true if you have no sense of nuance. Uh, the Heather Beam fires quicker and has farther range, which is more significant in a category where health values really aren't that important. That's 8329. I promise that's correct. I never know how you can manage to read those. I don't know either. Like, I swear that's right. Like, was, uh, oh god, the mouse sensitivity is crazy high. Yes, yeah, that was right. Nice. Of, of course I'm right. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Always. So normally you'd have to like solve a puzzle there, like you put the books in the bookcase and it like shows you the numbers, but you can just look at the numbers like, I know what that is. You get used to Sarah Three's wacky number font pretty, pretty easy. But now we have the books in our inventory for the entire rest of the run, they never go away. <laughs> she just likes Shakespeare. The Shakespeare books too. And hey, look at radio. So yeah, we gotta, we gotta kill 31 enemies with the Heather Beam or the Sexy Beam. There are two dogs here, you can't really see them, but this is an ideal vantage point to do it from. I think that, no, that guy didn't die properly. I'll take care of that. Anime kills, man. Yo, bro, die. That's really annoying. <laughs> this is why the cult is interested in Heather. She's got some pretty sick powers. I'm gonna kill this guy as well. Okay, so like, I'm gonna take extras in this category. I'm not gonna aim for exactly 31 because that's like playing a super risky game. There is, you, the enemies can just choose not to die. It's not a damage thing. There is like a mechanic in this game where enemies can just oh. choose not to die <laughs> when they are knocked down, which is, very cool and good and, like, annoying as hell. They're not dying quickly at all. So how many kills does the wiki say you need? 30. 30. Oh. I actually, okay, so like, I think I've cottoned on to what's going on here. I think Windows 10 is having the issue where it doesn't actually swap difficulty properly, so I think I'm running on the wrong difficulty. Oh, uh -oh. well, I'm going to deal with it. I'm just, I'm just gonna hustle. Going for it. Go for it. Game saved. That's save <laughs> completed. That's save completed. That's not game saved. It's the new one. I'm just gonna go, that's gonna slow down the run of, like a button, but I, whatever. I don't have time to fix it. So is now Sexy Beam viable? No. 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 Okay. So you don't get to see the Sexy Beam? The goddamn radio's still going off. This guy doesn't die properly. Die properly. 
Oh, that's going to be so annoying. <laughs> that's going to be so annoying. <laughs> okay, so like, as far as PC ports of this era go, this one's actually pretty good. It just doesn't like Windows 10 very much. Mm, same with Silent Hill 4. And there's, there's, nothing, there's nothing you can really do about that. Like, it, too. this is what you're dealing with. This and, is what you're dealing with, Games of Sword. And Homecoming. And all of them. Just, we don't want to mention that one, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> All right, so we're coming up on a, a glitch, actually, a fun glitch. This run has those, shockingly. This is like the one glitch we've managed to find in like some decade and a half of trying to break this game. When you're going across this loan, this is very exact, actually. When you're going across this, did I get that? Okay. I will equip this. Magical girl time. <laughs> Hello Kitty Power. That looks like I'm flipping off the camera. <laughs> 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 Sexy beam shoot I didn't hit it. <laughs> you gotta <laughs> You gotta activate that transformation cutscene as you overlap this loading screen. And I'm doing a poor job of this right now. This is very exact and actually the bandage on my finger is not helping with precise movement. <laughs> no. It'll happen eventually, I promise. No. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Buddy, you're being real awkward. Almost okay? there. Almost there. Oh my god. Almost there. Almost. Almost. Maybe Almost one more. There. One by one. One, one more. One. Pixel by pixel. There we there go. There we go. Okay. Okay, so now we're out of bounds. Nice. Now we're out of bounds. And I actually have to, I have to look really hard here because my visual cue for this is lighting changes in a very subtle way. Also, if I quick turn out of bounds, I crash the game. So like, <laughs> I've got to be careful not to do that as well. Uh, so we're like out of bounds. We're out of we're out of the map entirely. Uh, this is really weird, and I don't like it. This is this is very dodgy. <laughs> this is extremely dodgy. Uh, now I'm just gonna tap left a whole bunch and hope to God that works. Fine. This is not fine. <laughs> <laughs> this is not fine. This setup is extremely dodgy. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. I think you gotta tap right maybe a little bit. Uh, yes. There we go. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Okay. This is how malls work, right? That line was incredibly janky. <laughs> okay, so we're under the mat, which you think would be a problem, but the door hitbox is kind of just down here, so like that's chill. Uh, I'm actually going to take the opportunity to save the game real fast because uh, since the difficulty is apparently having issues, I don't trust it not to crash on Windows 10. It does that sometimes. I'm I'm not taking any chances. And if you're wondering how much that skipped. Half, half the mall and the first. Yeah, we, we skipped yeah. a boss fight. Like we skipped a boss fight so hard it actually fails to show up in the results screen. Yes, that's true. Like at the end of the game, it shows your kill times for all the bosses. That boss just fails to appear if you skip it in this manner. It's a miracle the game doesn't crash as a result of doing that. That's the one glitch we found uh, through the many, many years of people like poking at this game trying to make it break. In terms of like solidly put together games, Silent Hill 3. There's a lot of minor jank to it, but it's really hard to break seriously. It's a pretty solidly put together game, all things told. Also, now that we have the Princess Heart costume on, uh, we have access to a stronger version of the Heather Beam, stronger, I've, I've, yeah, called the Sexy Beam. Uh, I'm gonna use it, one, we normally don't use this in a run because like, I prefer the Heather Beam for its like, uh, advantages in terms of range and speed, but I'm gonna use it once just for the sound effect. It's a good sound effect. Also, we need this Nutcracker. It is very important that we get the Nutcracker. Seriously, it's a required item. I'm not just like pulling your legs here. Okay. Sex. 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 Sexy beam. beam. Ooh. And then just murdered all those dogs. I want to kill this guy too. It's taking much longer to kill any. It's taking a whole lot longer to kill anything than it should, but oh well. I'm just going to put up with it. Yeah. More sexy beam. So normally we enable something from the options menu that enable, like we enable beginner mode basically, that enables you to kill things quicker because you know, easier difficulties do that. But uh, there's, there's something about the privileges is just making it not take whatever. You gotta, you gotta deal with these things, man. It's GDQ. Windows 10. Windows 10. There's something about the. I still haven't changed yet. Same. I have. When wow. You, when, I, you, when you're dealing with PC ports these old, you kind of have to. It's kind awesome. of a miracle it works at all. Windows 7, everybody. <laughs> Come quick save. Save, save, save completed. completed. Save. Save. <laughs> I should have brought the game save sign. 
I don't know. I don't normally like quick save as much, but I'm kind of scared. <laughs> you see, we're on the train tracks now, right? We're gonna hit this door. It's like, oh god, the train is now arriving. But I want to kill these guys real quick, which I might not be able to because the difficulty's whack. Uh oh. I think you got time. That guy didn't die. I don't care. Okay. Whatever. I'm just, gonna, right. I'm just gonna leave him. Fair. Huh. Yeah. Because if, if you spend too long on the train tracks, obviously, the train will then collide with you, which is generally considered to be an ill-advised thing to do. Yeah, a little bit. I'm going to kill this guy for spare. That went clean. How many kills are here right now? I have completely lost track. <laughs> counting? We, we probably should have counted that. I don't count. Who counts? <laughs> to be I fair, just, just know. every time I ran this category, I didn't count either. So. Count is like, feel it like anime. It's a power. You gotta believe in the power of the beam. I just realized, like, I'm wearing a shirt of one of the advertisements on the subway in this game. Minmo cat foods, growing up strong and healthy. Yeah. Remember to feed your cat Minmo. Minmo, everyone. Min okay, did he actually die properly? No, of course he didn't. That's, that's just random, but like it occurs more on higher difficulties. It's like, <laughs> why is it like this? Like, that, that mechanic is working as intended, it's just the intention is annoying. <laughs> and here's a bigger one! I will give you beam! It's, yeah, it's... They both actually died properly that time, so that's good. good. Okay, and that is the subway carriage. Just for insurance, I'm taking that first aid kit. I'm playing it like uber safe. Mm -hmm. You can't take risks with it, because like, if you, if you undershoot the kill count by one, you fail the ending entirely. And uh, failing the ending would kind of defeat the entire point. <laughs> just, just a bit. I'm going to save the game again. There's this, entering the sewers is a, like a known crash point for this, so... Uh, here we go. Right, right. That's why I'm saving the game. I mean, saving is super quick in this game, so... Save completed. <laughs> Please don't crash. Thank you. All right. Okay. Hey. Red. This drains your health, actually, and there's no way to avoid the damage here, so that's, that's groovy. Thank you very much. <laughs> this is a New Game Plus only thing, just this mm. hallway turns red and drains your health. Huh. Go figure. So uh, these two enemies coming up in this room, these are pendulums, and this category has a glitch associated with these. But it's not a fun glitch, like a cool glitch that breaks the game. This is just one of those annoying glitches where... Okay, no, those guys are actually dead. Uh, if you kill those two enemies close, too close together, the game will fail to count them properly for your overall kill count. It's like, oh, how do you know that happens? You don't. <laughs> you get to the end of the run and then realize you're one short change and you, like, pull your hair out trying to figure out what kill you missed. And it turns out, after, like, a million hours of testing and countless lost runs, it turns out it wasn't your fault and you weren't miscounting. It's just the game does it wrong. <laughs> you have ending! I'm not <laughs> bitter at all. I'm very bitter. I'm so bitter. Nice camera angle, buddy. Change that. This, yep, this is definitely oh. a camera angle that I'm looking at right here. Thank you. Oh, no, it really insists on this camera angle. It just wants nothing to do with it. At least he died. They died. So, like, that's, that's points. That's killers. I need those. Give me this wine bottle. It's important. Unfortunately, it's an empty wine bottle. Otherwise, we'd be able to hurt ourselves more again. <laughs> Am I allowed to make that joke? Yeah, you can. <laughs> you can. <laughs> Mild roasting. Mild. Two pendulums again and again. These, these might just count only as one kill, and I will have no idea it's happened, which is why I'm, like, taking extra, extra precautions with these. Killing way more than I should, et cetera, et cetera. Because you don't, you don't want to fail the ending. That would suck. Yeah, then we would actually be playing the game. I yeah. I didn't come here to play the game. This loading screen is longer than usual, don't panic. Do, do, do. Thank you. Hey. <laughs> don't panic. I say, it does that on every computer. Every computer I've ever tried this game on, it does that. That loading screen is just longer than the others. Is it Windows 10? <laughs> no, it's just the game. It just be like that. Camera, please cooperate <laughs> with me for once in your life, man. Okay, he died. I like how the bodies bounce after, like, the final one hits them. That's because they've, like, chosen to fake die and the heather beam is, like, colliding with them after that, which is one of the reasons the heather beam is actually the superior choice for this category, because an enemy can go down and, like, fake die, and then the heather beam's good fire speed can clip them on the way down, which can, like, end their fake death with a finishing blow. So that's very useful. Anyway, we got a wine bottle full of oil, the perfect use for a wine bottle. 
quick turn. If you hit aim while quick turning, you can cancel the quick turn in mid turn. It results in this super janky, like weird wave arc that's slightly faster and kind of difficult to do, so I don't know why I did it. Show off style. Sweet. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I forgot. There's actually... Oh, no, I lied. The out-of-bounds isn't the only glitch in this run. I gotta do this. Oh, yes. I gotta do this. I'm excited. I gotta do this one. Okay. I forget about this. Uh, all right. You got this. Okay. I see. We're walking on sunshine. Whee! <laughs> First try. I'm walking in the wrong First direction. try zip. So that, was, nice. so that was cool, right? It doesn't save any time. <laughs> <laughs> Style points! It saves no time. It's, if you run that normally, it saves half a second to do it normally. But I did it anyway, because, like, of course I did. <laughs> How would you not do something like that? Give me this hairdryer. This hairdryer has the worst hitbox of any hairdryer in a video game. That is an award. I'd give it to this game. <laughs> it's really hard to pick up. It has such an exact angle. Does anyone have a list of uh, games with blow dryers in it that you pick up? I've practiced picking up the hair dryer in this game specifically numerous times. What a thing to practice. It's, it's a Silent Hill game. It's just these are the things you've got to do when you speedrun Silent Hill games. Yo, big dude, can you, like, personal space? Can you fall over more to the point? Uh, all right. They, I, I think they died. I'm not totally... I'm pretty, pretty Hopefully sure Hopefully they, they did. Anyway, we need this hairdryer so we can throw it in water to kill, like, a monster that's in there. As one does with a hairdryer. Standard usage. That's how they're all in the hotels. No heather beam, though, for it. No. That would have been amazing. If you could just heather beam it. Okay, two pendulums here. These pendulums are not susceptible to the two counting as one glitch, although these usually don't take many hits to kill, although I don't know how it's going, considering my difficulties are, like, bugged out to, to hell and back right now. Whoa. Whoa! Bruh, come back. Uh, and they're gone. Hit and run. Rude. I think that's a third one. Whatever. I don't know. I think there is a third one in the back. I think a third one spawned. I don't yeah. know. This is, this is messing with me, dude. <laughs> You'll die of loneliness. Don't worry. <laughs> For fail the ending, I'm going to be incredibly upset. I feel like you've gotten enough extras. I've, yeah. I've bu I think I've budgeted way over, but I'm like super nervous about it because I noticed immediately, oh dear, something's, something has gone wrong like on a base level with this. So wait, so this is on normal. Does there mean like a free think, world record for this? Uh, yeah, you know, you were finding <laughs> on normal mode. Whoa! Technically, the only technically runner. true. The only runner. I bet you it's like that bug difficulty thing where it doesn't show up properly. Okay, once again, I'm going to save the game because transition between areas has a habit of crashing the game. This is like the last area of the game, so that... I think I'll make a save one more time before the nightmare. And normally the game would be much longer, but since this is UFO, it ends about like the halfway point. Yeah. Anyway, here we can... Read some donations for us real quick, Enigma. Sure. We have... DJW has sent us a $500 donation. Ooh! Nice. Who says, enjoying the run. Thank, Thank you very, you very much. much. We have a $333 donation from Marcy Bones. Hey! Who says, go, Punchy, I believe in you. I was really scared that crashed the game for a moment. <laughs> Continue. We have a, from Winslash, a $302 Ooh. donation. Ooh. Who says... Shoutouts to the Silent Hill with the best picture of the wolf. Thank you for running this, Punchy. Also, shoutouts to Tikara, who is just the best. Donation goes to Punchy's choice. All right, we are now inside the apartment building proper. Where I'm once again going to pick up spare kill on this. Actually, does the dog spawn in immediately or am I? Yeah. Yeah, but where is he? There he is. You can hear him. <laughs> the heather beam is like hitting around the corner. I, yeah, that's the advantage of the heather beam is that it can collide from outrageously large distances and through walls. It would just the, the sexy beam can technically hit through walls, but like it's not so good at it. Did it spawn another one? No, it didn't. I also like killing that guy as a spare is nice because when you're playing on a on easy mode, when you press the interact key, there's a chance that the auto aim might kick in and like flip mm. you away from the door. That's a feature that's in two and three, which is annoying every time. It's very sensitive as well. It's very yeah. sensitive. If, luckily, UFO ending is not so susceptible to it because you murder everything in this category. True. So it works out. Light off. This is a really weird one. 
especially because, like, do you want to hit the one behind me there, Heather? Yes! Yeah, yeah the, like, get the curve shot going. That's so talented. Hey, good enough. I'll take it. I'm loving those quick turn cancels. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's relatively new tech. That was introduced by a Canadian runner who simply goes by Alice. Alice. Yeah. So you got, you got to love the, the, the runners, right? Like you got, fat, you got like Punchy, you got Egeisis, like the, the chronically unpronounceable name in writing. Oh god, I just call it that. <laughs> There's way too many wrong ones. Oh, that's the wrong item. And then you just have Alex. He only runs this game and he kind of popped out of the ether, but like he introduced a lot of new ideas and tech to the game, so... He's very good at he's it. He's very good at it. Like, well done. For, for a single game specialist, he's done great work on this. It seems to happen with other Silent Hill games, too. Just someone randomly pops up and just optimizes the crap out of the game. This series is susceptible yeah. to that a lot, and it always raises red flags, and it's, 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 it leads to interesting discussions. All right, Nightmare World time. I make it. That's the last save I'm going to make, because, again, I'm paranoid of it crashing. No more game saved. No more game saved. Save, save completed. Save, save completed. Save completed. completed. This please, is don't, free. please don't body me. Okay, he didn't body me. <laughs> Those guys are jerks. They body super hard. Like, okay, so this game has a block function that we never use in this round because who blocks in the video game? This isn't a fighting game. I have blocked. This is a beam game. <laughs> Real beam game. It's an anime <laughs> beam game. Real anime. Oh, wait, get out. The, the body has collision. But yeah, those guys like grab attack and then knock down attack. Basically, just their attacks. They're not blockable. And they're one of like the small handful of things in the game that isn't blockable. Why are they like that? I don't know. Super annoying in a new game run. Ask, yes. ask Konami. Ask that con my quality. I don't know anything. I just gotta say, it's, I'm happy that elevators can be skipped in this, unlike in two. One elevator in two can be skipped, but only one. <laughs> just one. It just, it's the only one that lets you. Whereas this game, like, it does let you skip the elevators, and that's nice. This is a good game, y'all. I'm just throwing that out there. Like, it we, is a very good we, game. We, we, we like to rib at GDQ, because, you know, we like, we, we like breaking games and all that, but this is a good video game. It looks very nice. It holds up very well. Oh, yeah. It's one of the prettiest yeah. PS2 games of all time. This opinion. loading screen also takes longer on the way out. <laughs> Weirdly enough, this game started off as, like, a rail shooter. I've heard this yes, story. Yeah. I've heard this story as well. Like, and if you ever played Sound Hole the Arcade, it's terrible. That's a terrible game. It's funny terrible, though. Okay, the hitbox on this painting is also very peculiar in particular about whether or not this counts. Okay, there we go. You got it. That's the hardest hitbox in the video game. We That's did it. Where did the hairdryer? Oh, well. That one's the second hardest then, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Leave me alone. I don't want to risk going around the corner, so I'm going to hope that the heather beam can, like, get both of these nerds. It didn't get this. Oh. oh! That's why they're jerks. I yeah. couldn't block that even if I wanted to. Oh, oh. wow, he is not uh, He's dead, whatever. Uh, no, he's oh, not. He's not. <laughs> no! Just faded! Break his legs! This blows! Stop it! Did I get the third guy as well? No, okay, whatever. Leave. Go away. Just forget this guy. This clown. I'm gonna kill this guy on the pure basis that I don't like him. <laughs> No, see, this is why I don't like him. <laughs> That's what I get for hubris, I suppose, but, like, go away. Point proven. Well, you know you had to do it to him. Give me that silver coin. I need money. Give me American currency. <laughs> That's the wrong strafe direction, genius. <laughs> I held the wrong button. <laughs> That's the wonderful thing about movement in Silent Hill games. It looks really, like, effortless until it isn't. Yeah, no, I just, I just like strafed in totally the wrong direction. World record holder, by the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like a lot. So the, the, the use of the heather beam in this category is like something that I came up with fairly recently. And it's one of the things that's enabled me to push this category down to the point where like I actually think the time is good. That's just annoying. You are rude. Take and down. And now you will die for it. What if he didn't hit you? Would he have lived? Something didn't die. That guy did not die properly. Okay, you can tell because the music goes quiet. And that is actually the last of the kills that we can get. And I, I hope to God we got enough. We'll find out when we cross into the hilltop apartment. Until that then... That feels like over 31. 31. That, that feels like significantly over 31, but still, I played it, like, super safe. <laughs> so, Enigma, hit us with some donations. Sure thing. We have a $100 donation from Necrotal, who says, Longtime watcher of GDQ events, only my second time donating. Had to donate during a Silent Hill UFO ending run. Good luck. Go to Silent Hill and bust some heads. 
<laughs> yes. We're doing that. We're doing that right now. One more, I think. We have a $15 donation from Brandon E. Jenkins, who says, here's $15 towards runner's choice for making picking up a hairdryer look so easy. <laughs> it's a hard hitbox, man. <laughs> okay, so that is... Yes! Okay. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Woo! Now the real fun begins. But time is not until after the credits, and the credits <laughs> are very important. It's like this. Heather explains her crazy day. Cheryl? Spo I spoilers. Can't Cheryl? Spoilers for like a 15 year old game, man. And I'm gonna bust, bust some heads. heads. We're going to Silent Hill to bust dad, some heads. You're, you're the, the coolest. coolest! He is the cool. Harry Mason, best dad in video games. He knows karate. We never actually went to Silent Hill in this run. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we're here. Now we're here. Now we're here. And we're just, we're and just Woo! No more Silent Hill at GDQ. Silent Hill is cancelled. We blew it up. No more Silent Hills. Amy's gonna make it in. But it's time, everyone. It's time. Get your microphones. Get your karaoke stands. Gather around. Gather around. Gather around. <laughs> you might want to turn the music ready? up a little bit for this. You guys ready? All right, let's go. You're pulling this slightly too fast. It's a little fast. A little fast, a little fast. You're off beat. <laughs> it's a little fast. <laughs> Let's all sing the Silent Hill song. It's entirely in Japanese and it's Team Silent getting drunk as hell in a recording booth. That's how they did this ending. I think I'm maybe. I think I'm maybe on that part. One, two, a one, one, two, go, Nana. Turn this up. Yo, man. Please turn it up. Yes. Yo. 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 Yes. Yo. Oh, yeah, there it is. But you should. Well, Kurodia, Kurodia, Honto Yashi, Obasanda, I should know that of the couch and me, I'm the only one who actually knows Japanese. <laughs> I try. Which we didn't see in this run. Last but not least, Heather. I'm still at Japanese. Heather. Heather. 
What's the actual results screen? How much did I drastically overshoot the kill count? Hey, that's world record in normal. 1916. <laughs> <laughs> hey! Nice! Nice! <laughs> I should've... There's so many! Oh, yeah, okay, no, I actually can't tell. It doesn't show up on the results screen. Why is that? Because you skipped the worm. Siren to hear me! Studio! Thank you very much, everyone. Show it! Catch your breath. We're done here. <laughs> well, well, well. That was something. Whew. Took a lot of work to get over there. Coming up in just a moment. Coming up in just a moment, we have an interview coming up. A Kung Fu Fruit Cup will be with some of our photography and camera operations people. And we're currently getting set up for the two players. One controller run of Sonic Adventure DX Director's Cut. But for just a moment, we're going to play a quick Twitch ad and we'll be right back. Right, we are back from our Twitch ad break. We are going to play some words from our sponsors here real quick as well.
showrunners of the 8-4 Play podcast, the first, best, last, and only show for talk about Japan and games and Japanese games. English language localizers of numerous fan favorites from Japan, including Fire Emblem Awakening, Nier Automata, Monster Hunter World, and the critically acclaimed Pets Hamsters Bunch. Publishers of the PlayStation 4 and, Net and Nintendo Switch versions of Undertale and Deltarune Chapter 1, find us on the interwebs at 8-4.jp, our second home at giantbomb.com, and on Twitter at 8-4-play. All right, and right now we have Kung Fu Fruit Cup ready for an interview with some of our photography and camera operations people. So Kung Fu Fruit Cup, take it away. Hey everyone, I know I'm back so soon. This is Kung Fu back here. I am now talking with Richard and Angel, who are two of our amazing Woo! GDQ staff members. <laughs> yes, give them a hand. Yeah. <laughs> I love all the love. All right guys, you have been around with GDQs for quite a while. I've heard since 2015. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Good confirmation. Um, so I'd love to know a bit about the history of, you know, how you got involved in GDQs and where you started out from. Do you want to go ahead? Go ahead. Yeah, of course. Okay. Uh, so I started uh, coming to GDQs as a volunteer back in 2015. Um, I was just a big fan of speedrunning. I uh, watched from... Uh, SGDQ 2013, I went to Korean barbecue at AGDQ 2014 with some StarCraft people actually, and there were some speedrunners there. Uh, and then I, I, I just enjoy helping out at events. I used to help out at a bunch of esports events, and now here I am. <laughs> nice, okay. Yeah, I similarly started in 2015. I was an uh, active duty Marine Corps, and I was like, I really want to help out. I was a, a photographer with them, and uh, I just reached out started taking photos and uh, haven't stopped since. That's amazing. Yeah. And uh nah, we... don't don't worry about him. Man. Don't. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, anyway. <laughs> um <laughs> so since you guys have been volunteering and you've had this transition to staff, can you tell me kind of when that took place and how that worked for you guys? Yeah. <laughs> Start with Angel. Okay. Um so I started uh I want to say a couple years ago. Uh, well, I started in 2015, just taking photos, and went from there to, you know, trying to take the to photos of the entire event by myself. It was just, it was, it was too much. So we ended up having some volunteers, some people to, you know, help out, take photos to, you know, to cover the whole event. Um, it's not easy. You got to get on the stage. You have uh, a lot going on. You got a lot of yelling. So, uh, I, you know, I started uh, asking around, like, hey, would you like to help me to help you? Uh, would you like me to help you take photos? And yeah, people were receptive. I started just you know taking a little bit of charge there, helping people take photos. You know, I'm I'm used to it. You know, taking photos in, in hard situations here. Um, and eventually, it just kind of went to like, hey, you are really good at helping people, and we would like to have you here as staff. So I was like, just sure. And that's kind of how it ended. <laughs> that's awesome. So when when exactly were you made staff? Uh, oh boy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to say uh, approximately around 2017. Um, okay, wow. So yeah, uh, been a staff, been doing this for a little bit of a while here. Um, <laughs> and we went, we grew from, we had like a handful of photographers and now we have about like uh, 16 photographers that we work under. Uh, that work under me. Um, I train every single one of those by my, that, not by myself, but I train every single photographer that comes in. Uh, if they're new, uh, anybody can take photos. <laughs> I will take anybody. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, that was like my whole thing. Like I, I just wanted anybody that wanted to, that felt passionate to take photos that I wanted to be, I want to provide them the opportunity to do so. That's awesome. Thanks. So how about you, Richard? All right. Uh, so <laughs> back in 2015, uh, the first badge that I got at uh, AGQ 2015 was actually a staff badge because they ran out of volunteer badges. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, but yeah, so um, I just started volunteering um, from 2015 to actually uh, SGDQ of last year. Um, and then I was uh, staff this year. I helped out with Angel uh, because, you know, he needs some sleep. You know, yes. he looks a little bit tired now. Maybe after this interview, you can get some shut eye. I would love. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I started helping out, um, and 
obviously with the growth of the interview area and like the wonderful audience that we have out there, you know, there's a lot of different moving parts to the setup. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely something that needed to get split up, mm -hmm. uh, get a separate role from the photography role for the cameras that you can see right there. <laughs> We're usually behind the camera, so as you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you can't even tell. I can't even tell personally, but that's just me. Um, so, okay, kind of leaning from you talking about the interview area. Yes, we have this area here, and we have the main stage. So with all these different areas, can you tell me a little bit about the difference and how they're set up? Yeah, so there are actually two different roles for camera ops. So there is the uh, interview area, so we can have uh, each of these... Uh, different cameras here set up uh, similar to the studio. So, you know, there's this set here with all these cool things. If you want to go to the wide shot, fant, there we go. So you can see, you know, a lot of different things. There's three cameras here. Uh, on the main stage, we have, uh, you know, a, typically a singular camera uh, for each run. Uh, some races have multiple cameras, but those are set up uh, on jibs. There's a lot more uh, movement to them. There are people uh, that are, you know, sitting and playing on a chair and then people on the couch behind. Some people play on the couch. Uh, sometimes the couch, ex like, expands to be a couple chairs on the side of the couch. So uh, we have those cameras on jibs and there's a, a little bit more... Um, you know, dynamic movement there in that, like, we had to position uh, that camera a little bit differently than the, you know, setup here. Right, yeah, and then it makes it easy to kind of <clears throat> adjust for each yeah. run as necessary, whereas we're more kind of a static position, which is great. I'm sure this is a little easier. <laughs> Um, so, okay, so for you, Angel, I, I'm sure there might be people out there who are wondering, yeah, we have video of GDQs, like, so why photographs? Like, what's important about the photography in your, in your mind? Great question. And, <laughs> uh, you know, when they started doing video, they're like, why would we need photography, you know, at all? But, hey, years down the line, we are still strong. We are still taking photos of people. So uh, we're important. We're relevant. <laughs> um, my main answer is uh, it, the runners. You know, they come in here, they practice, they work, and then they go in there and they do, they take, you know, they do their run. And they are, you know, they're on the stage in front of all these people having this moment, you know, they take, uh, uh, playing the video game and, you know, speed running. I love that we can capture that very moment and give them to them and be like, hey, you went up there, you raised money for charity, you, you know. Uh, you know, a lot of people, they, you know, this is a, very difficult for them. This is a lot of, you know, people to be uh, uh, streaming in front of. And, you know, we like to capture that moment. I, I like to tell my photographers, like, you sometimes you need to be just patient and wait for them. They, you know, a lot of people, when they play video games, they have this, like, you know, this look on their face. <laughs> They're playing video games. But every so often, they'll hit, like, this, this trick or this, like, frame perfect, like, what have you. And you'll just, you'll see a crack in their little, their, their stoic face of a smile or this just like, yes, or the little, this little, this little moment here. And you just, you, you take a photo of it and later on we might post it on social media. We work with social media and uh, they decide what photos they go on, you know, depending on what they're doing, but it'll be on the album and I'll, I'll get like messages all the time. Like, thank you so much for that, for that photo. That, that means so much to me. You yeah. know, that's, that's that moment right there where uh, I was okay. You know, yeah. Like the, everything something was, special. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you just see the, the yeah. nervousness on their face and it just kind of melts away because now they're in the zone. They've been doing this. It's okay. Yeah. And they just start having fun playing, you know, playing their game that they love. That's awesome. So for those who want to get into volunteering, especially in the photography and video department, do you have any recommendations for people looking to come into this? Uh, I just say have, have an open mind. Like you can have as much experience, uh, like as someone that's been in the industry for a while, but it's really just like, you want to help. If you're interested in something, just say that you're interested in it. You know, you don't need to have necessarily all the experience. Um, you know, we're all here to grow. Like, we as speedrunners, you know, we start with like this crappy PB and our second PB is all golds, right? So like, <laughs> it's, it's fine. That's completely fine. Yeah. We just have to gradually improve, and you can't do that without just initially saying, I want to help, I want to do this. Mm -hmm. I say come in with an open mind. Uh, like Richard was saying, we all start from a, at some point, right? And then we get better. Uh, with photography, a lot of people tend to feel like they're a little intimidated because like, hey, I, I've never shot it before, but you know, if you're one of the persons who just like, likes to tell a story and just likes to, you know, 
take photos. You don't have to be a professional. Come on in. I help. I've taken people who shoot for a living and who've never shot really before with any kind of camera outside of their, their, their cell phone. So I just say come in with an open mind and just with a, with a thirst to want to help people. Nice. Yeah, I think that's great. Awesome advice. Thank you, guys. So uh, to wrap up, I kind of want to ask about if there's something that you feel like people, especially with your experience, real quick, um, something you feel like people should know about GDQs that maybe they don't or don't typically think about. All right, I'll, I'll start with this one here. So our production that we put together is 24 hours for seven days. It is something that you know some uh, uh, other companies with a large, much larger budget try to put together, and you know what? They they don't talk. They come close to what we do, pull. And that's because of the hard work that everybody here does. Like, I get asked, like, hey, why don't, you know, you guys are doing this rickety old thing. Why don't you guys just buy this, you know, this uh, machine that will do it for you? And we're like, because we, you know, we don't really have the budget. We, we, we take what we have and we make the most of it. Like, you give, there's a saying, you give the interview team anything, we will use it. <laughs> that's true. No, that's true. It's great. Yeah, I mean, you know, something that, you know, Something about GDQ that people might not know about is just like, you know, we are all here to just, you know, have a good week, have have a good time, raise that money for charity, and um, it, it's just something that is super like enjoyable for everyone. You know, other people go to events and they like it's all like super serious, but you know, we try to have our little like amounts of fun like interspersed in between, making sure that we have a good production and. Um, you know, have that good balance of good production and good amount of memes that uh, <laughs> provide for us. Absolutely. And uh, I believe that is the perfect way to take us into the next game that is coming up. So I want to say thank you once again so much to Richard and Angel for your, um, for your history and your background and your expertise on um, the things that you do for GDQ. And thank you again for all of your amazing help. It's, you help make this event what it is. It's awesome. Thank you, Kung Fu. Yeah. <laughs> you. I'm just saying. <laughs> so, uh, okay, everybody, let's get super hype for our next run coming up. This is our two-player, one controller with Jerkro and Allegro with Sonic Adventure, Big Duck Cat. Big, Big Duck, Duck Cat. Cat. Big, Big Duck, Duck Cat. Big Duck Cat. Cat. Big Duck Cat. Cat. Big Duck, Duck Cat. Cat. Big Duck Cat. You hear it right now. It's going.